Uh, well, it's really nice to be here and to share something from God's word and to encourage God's people. Um, some of us on a Sunday have been reading and discussing a book called Gentle and Lowly, and it's a really good book. And one of the chapters in that book is, is all about a verse uh, from John's Gospel, John chapter 6, verse 37. And it's such a precious verse, uh, this verse. It says, this is from the, the King James Version. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. Um, that was one of John Bunyan's favourite verses. You can tell that because he quotes it a lot in his writings. Uh, John Bunyan lived in the 17th century. His most famous book is Pilgrim's Progress. That's, I think, besides the Bible, that is history's best-selling book. Um, but he also wrote 57 other books. And one of those books is just this, this long reflection, like the Puritans used to do. They'd take one verse and they'd just meditate on it, think upon it. And uh, he wrote a whole book on this one verse, John chapter 6, verse 37. And the title of the book is Come and Welcome to Jesus Christ. And I think that's such a beautiful title for a book. Uh, Come and Welcome to Jesus Christ. When you read that promise that verse in John 6 37 uh, you can tell that Jesus knows that his people will will be afraid that God might reject them um, you can tell that because he makes the promise so strong he says he that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out and apparently I was just reading a, a commentary and it says the text uses an emphatic negative and so literally the verse says, the one coming to me, I will not, not cast out. And how badly our hearts need to hear that promise from Jesus again and again, because we can think of so many reasons, can't we, for Jesus to cast us out in our hearts. Um, firstly, when we suffer, when we go through trials and we feel numb, um, we can start to feel like God is punishing us. God is rejecting us. We're being cast out. And so when we suffer, when we're going through difficulties, we must look to the cross. Uh, I don't know why we have to go through the things we have to go through. But when we look to the cross, when we see Jesus dying for our sins on the cross, we meet a God who draws near to us and understands and who cares for us, cares for us in our sufferings. He's entered into our sufferings. And when we come to the cross, we realize we're, we're not being punished. Jesus was punished for our sins so that we can be brought in. Um, Jesus doesn't say in this verse, his promise isn't those people with pain-free lives are never cast out. And Jesus's promises, those who come to me are never cast out. And so when we suffer, we need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ again and again. We need to turn to him in our sufferings, not not turn away from him in the knowledge that he he cares for his people and he's with his people in the valley. And he understands how we feel. Um, he's an ever present help in times of trouble. And he will in no wise cast out those who come to him in their need. And then secondly, I think the other reason we can often feel afraid that Jesus might cast us out is our sin. And sometimes it's specific sins or failures from the past and they just continue to haunt us and to worry us. Or maybe there's sins, present sins in our lives, habitual sins, the way we use our tongue or the things we do or think about. And we just can't seem to shake them off. And that can worry us. Or maybe we just have more of a, a general sense of our failure and our unworthiness all the time. We, we feel like Jesus, surely one day he's going to grow tired of us. He's going to hold us at arm's length. And John Bunyan, he really understood that feeling as a believer. He suffered from that, that in his own heart. But he also understood how powerful the gospel is. Because the gospel says, the word of God says, 
we do deserve to be cast out because of our sin. Remember Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, where they walked with the Lord in the corners of the day. Um, but when they sinned, they had to leave the garden. And you think about the Israelites in the Old Testament. They were commanded to put up that thick curtain in, that, in the temple to remind them that they couldn't enter into God's dwelling place because of their sin. Um, but then we, we read of Jesus, the son of God, the one who lived that perfect, sinless life, always in joyful fellowship with the father, always doing the father's will. And then he came for us. He died outside the city walls. He was forsaken by the father on the cross for our sin. He was cursed and he was cut off for us um, so that all who come to him, with nothing but their sin and their need, all who come to him for forgiveness, all who come to him to have their relationship with God restored, he will in no ways cast them out. The curtain has been torn in two. And Bunyan writes in his book, Come and Welcome to Jesus Christ, he says this promise in John chapter 6, verse 34, <clears throat> it was provided by Jesus to answer all objections and it does answer them. And Bunyan writes these, these words in his book. He says, but I am a great sinner, say you. I will in no wise cast out, says Christ. But I am an old sinner, say you. I will in no wise cast out, says Christ. But I am a hard-hearted sinner, says you. I will in no wise cast out, says Christ. But I am a backsliding sinner, says you. I will in no wise cast out, says Christ, but I have served Satan all my days, say you. I will in no wise cast out, says Christ, but I have sinned against light, say you. I will in no wise cast out, says Christ, but I have sinned against mercy, say you. I will in no wise cast out, says Christ, but I have no good thing to bring with me, say you. I will in no wise cast out says Christ. Jesus receives all who come to him. Uh, there is no reason, there is no reason, Bunyan's saying in his book, that Jesus would close off his heart to his own sheep. All who come to him in faith and repentance, they will be received every single time. Um, and it's not just that Jesus has made this promise and now he is bound to the promise and he kind of regrets making it. Now, keeping this promise is Jesus's delight. The Gospels say when one sinner repents, heaven rejoices. As you read the Gospels, you discover a man, a God man who loves to welcome and receive those sinners who come to him for forgiveness and salvation. And we come to him for the first time at the start of our Christian lives when we're converted. And then we come to him thousands of other times after that every day of our lives until one day upon death, we're with him forever. And so I think I just, there's that, that challenge in this verse. Have you, have you ever come to Christ? And then secondly, do you come to him often? Jesus cannot bear to, to part with his own people, even when they deserve to be forsaken. And so we can remember, let's remember this week, that title of, of Bunyan's book, Come and Welcome to Jesus Christ, because that's the gospel invitation to all of us, uh, to all people in the world and to us today as well. Come and welcome to Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Let me lead us in prayer. Charlotte Elliott wrote these words. Uh, she was disabled, she was in pain, she was weak, she was feeling very useless. And she wrote these, these words in her hymn. Just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within without, O Lamb of God, I come. 
just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come. Lord, we come to you today. Uh, we need you, Lord. We need your forgiveness. We need your salvation. We want to be your people. Thank you for receiving us. Thank you for welcoming us. Thank you for your amazing promise that you will never cast us out. And we pray that your Holy Spirit would help us to believe that promise deep in our hearts every day of our lives until that final day when we will be with you forever. Thank you for being such a good and a kind and a patient and a loving saviour towards your people, towards us. In Jesus' name. Amen.